students and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kimberly and I'm now a second year medical student from the Lee Kong Chun School of Medicine under NTU Singapore. So in today's video, I'll be talking about resources and materials that I've been using in my first two years of medical school. Now, a brief disclaimer here, you don't actually need to use any of these materials in medical school. Usually the school lectures and school materials are enough. But for me, sometimes when I watch the school lectures, I'm left with more questions than when I first started. And so I use these materials to help supplement my learning and help to answer any questions that I have. With that being said, this video will be split up into different categories, the timestamps of which will be in the description box below. Feel free to check that out and skip around if you wish. And let's get into the video. Okay, the first section that I want to talk about is actually anatomy. So this is basically learning about all the components that make up a system. For instance, if we're learning about the cardiovascular system, we need to know about how the heart looks like, what makes up the heart, and for example, things like the blood vessels as well, and how these all play into each other and where different structures are in the body. This is actually a pretty complicated topic in of itself because one, there is just so many names to remember, Every single vessel, every single part of your body has a separate name and some of the names honestly don't make sense. Second of all, some of the names are actually not even in English. Some of them are in German, some are in Russian, some I think most of them are in Latin in fact. And there are some people who have found certain body parts in the past, like they discovered it and they named it after themselves. With that being said, this makes anatomy quite a daunting topic to study, especially for first and second year medical students, where it's kind of like learning a new language altogether, especially with the fact that most of the keywords aren't even in English, you literally are learning a new language. However, in general, anatomy is actually mostly about pattern recognition. It's like looking at a circle and recognizing it's a circle. If you don't know what a circle looks like, you wouldn't be able to tell that it is a circle. Because of that, I feel that anatomy and studying anatomy is very much visual based and so most of my resources are stuff that have very good, uh, very clear imagery and very clear labelling so that I have a very good understanding of where is what structure. With that being said, the two materials that I want to recommend to you guys is Netta's flashcards as well as its um, accompanying textbook as well as the more clinically oriented anatomy textbook. As you guys may or may not have seen in some of my previous vlogs, I personally really love to use Aneta's flashcards. The pictures are just so clear and the labelling are so clear that it's so easy to understand and so easy to study. So now let me pull out some cards and let me show you guys how it looks like. So this is the box, the original box, this is how it looks like. And then inside, we have different categories with divisions for different parts of the body. For example, the green section is head and neck, which I recently completed, finally. And this part is back and spinal cord. We also have thorax, abdomen. We have pelvis and perineum, upper limb and lower limb. So there is a lot, a lot of cards here. And within each card, there is colored pictures on one side with labeled numbers. I don't know if you guys can see that. And the answers for each of the labels are behind. And sometimes they have an extra description or extra information that you can also study, as well as some clinically relevant information that they will give in this gray box. So my favorite part about these cards is that they actually show the same structures, but in different views. So for some of them, this might be, for instance, the frontal view, of the skull as if you're looking straight up at a person and they have some views where the skull has been cut in half and you look at it from the side. So this, this gives me a very good three-dimensional perspective of an object. So if I were to see a skull from the side, I would still know exactly what structure is where. Additionally, this thing comes with its own um, digital copy which uh, you can download for free and you have free access once you buy the hard copy. One other fun thing about this deck is that every single card actually has a punch hole in the corner and it comes with this ring, this ring, which you can hook the cards into. So you can, I don't know, bring the cards along with you if you want to study it on the bus or whatever. 
so quite cute so next up is Moore's Clinical Anatomy. So for this textbook, as well as all the other textbooks that I'll be mentioning in this video, I don't have the physical copy of the book. I personally use a digital copy that I download from this website called PDF Drive. So I'll put the link for that website in the description if you guys want to check that out. But if you're more of a textbook person rather than a flashcard person, I would recommend using Moore's Clinical Anatomy to study anatomy. As a quick disclaimer, all the textbooks from PDF Drive are likely not going to be the most recent versions or most recent copies, but I honestly think that there's not much difference between the versions and who doesn't like free textbooks, honestly speaking. So the next section I want to talk about is physiology. Now this is talking about how the body is supposed to work normally. You have to first learn how the body works in order to understand how the body can go wrong and how you get sick. So physiology is a very important part of medicine and honestly it's one of my favorite parts because it's just so interesting to figure out and to understand how the body is so miraculous in keeping you alive. So the two resources that I like to use for studying physiology is the Bots and Beyond lecture series as well as the Guyton and Hall physiology textbook. So the Bots and Beyond lecture series is a lecture series done by Dr. Ryan who is a cardiologist in America. He made this lecture series in order um, for medical students who are taking the US Medical Licensing Examinations or the USMLE for short. Now these are a series of examinations that all medical students in the US have to take in order to become licensed doctors and to be able to practice in America. Even though I'm not intending to take the exam myself, I think that the content that he's making in this lecture series is universal. I mean, how the stomach works in US is the same as how the stomach works in Australia, so I don't really think there's much of a difference there. Um, however, that being said, the Bots and Beyond Lecture Series is in fact a subscription service and the price can be quite steep. So I leave it up to you whether or not you actually want to use this subscription service, but personally I think it's worth every cent. I use the lecture series religiously and you guys may or may not have seen it in some of my other videos like my vlogs. I do it all the time to help me prepare for tutorials and help me have a better understanding of concepts. Sometimes Dr. Ryan gives very interesting mnemonics that helps with memorizing and understanding the concept much better. And it's just so good. I really love it. It's really great. The subscription service not only comes with the lectures, but it also comes with questions for you to practice your knowledge after you finish every single lecture. So it's a great way to apply and see whether or not you actually understood his lectures. So next up is the Guyton and Hall's Medical Physiology textbook. That is such a mouthful. This is something that I use very sparingly nowadays, but it's something that I used previously in the first year of medical school before I found out about bots and beyond. Now I don't use it as much because it's honestly a bit fluffy and what I mean by that is that a very simple concept that can be explained within a few words or one sentence, the textbook takes an entire paragraph to explain it. It's very detailed and it's very very comprehensive so it's great if you want to learn it from scratch like you're trying to understand and learn an entire topic from scratch you can use this textbook for that so I would highly recommend it for first year medical students who are just starting out but I feel that once you uh, get more and more advanced be it later on in the first year of medical school or when you're moving on to second year maybe you want to move away from this textbook uh, but in any case, I would like to still recommend this to you guys because it is quite a good resource. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. This section is going to be about pathology. Previously, we talked about anatomy, which is what the body is made out of. And then we talked about physiology, which is how the body is supposed to work. And now we're going to be talking about pathology, which is how the body goes wrong. Now, this is a very integral part of medicine because once you know the cause of certain diseases, you have an idea of how to treat it. The three resources that I personally really like to use for studying pathology include Bots and Beyond, which I mentioned previously, Robin's Pathology, as well as the Petoma Lecture Series. So first and foremost, the Bots and Beyond Lecture Series I've already mentioned previously in the Physiology section. Go ahead and check that out if you skip that section. It's a really good lecture series done by Dr. Ryan, who is a cardiologist in America. And it's very comprehensive, so it covers everything from anatomy, physiology, pathology, as well as pharmacology, which we'll be talking about later. It's simply about drugs, essentially. And moving on quickly, we'll be talking about the Petoma Lecture Series. This is another paid subscription service. It's a lecture series done by Dr. Sata. 
He is a pathologist, I believe, also from America. His lecture series is really good. It's a very comprehensive. He explains things in such a nice way that just makes sense. Not only does he talk about how the disease happens, he also gives a brief explanation as to how the body is supposed to work and what exactly goes wrong to cause this disease. And one of my favorite parts about his lecture series is that it comes with a textbook that has a summary of every single thing that he talks about in his lectures. And it also has slides. So it has pictures of histology slides or basically cells taken from the person who is sick. So if there's a person with uh, a certain disease, they sometimes take needles, they put it into this person and they suck out cells or some samples from this person. They look at it under a microscope and if they see a certain type of cell or a certain characteristic look of the cell, they can diagnose the person with this disease. And so being able to know what the cell looks like under the microscope and having a picture for it and a corresponding description for it is actually really good because the school personally really loves to test this and it's really useful in, in uh, clinical practice as well. There are certain diseases that look very similar to each other and the only real way to tell them apart is to take samples from the patient, look at them under the microscope and from there tell whether or not this patient has this disease or this disease. So the next one I want to talk about is Robin's Pathology. This is another textbook that is actually very popular in the medicine community. There is the original Robin's as well as the Robin's Mini, which is kind of like a pocket version that is more convenient to carry around if you're having the original copies, the physical copy. Similar to Petoma, it has very good descriptions as to how the disease comes about, what's the cause, as well as how the cells looks like under the microscope. Next up will be clinical skills and clinical approaches. So in terms of clinical skills, one of, one of the very important things you'll be learning in the first two years of medical school is physical examinations. So learning how to check a patient and see whether or not their heart is working properly, their lungs are working properly. And so personally, I really like to use Geeky Medics for this. This is a YouTube channel, you can just find them, you can just search them up. I will link their channel in the description box below as well. And they have really good videos explaining every single step and what you're looking for in every step. Because sometimes the school says, observe the patient from the foot of the bed. And I'll be like, okay, what am I looking for? And in Geeky Medics, they actually break down every single step and explain what you should be looking for, how to accurately do certain examinations, certain tests you need to run and how to do things professionally as well. So they might teach you certain techniques as to how to conduct a certain examination. For example, how to check the heart, how to use the stethoscope, what are you listening for, what should it sound like, things like this. So it's really great for that and highly recommend. So the last section for today is practice questions. Honestly, I think the best way to learn something is through practice. Doing questions is the single best way of mastering anything you want to learn. Practice questions are an essential part of my exam preparation process and I do them religiously every single day. There are so many, so many question banks out there. Um, some that I've heard from my friends that are quite good include you World, and I think QuizMed is also quite good. But personally, I use Pass Medicine. So it's another website where if you have a school email address, subscription to this question bank is actually free. I personally use the medical students year one to three revision deck and it has questions for all the different topics that I need for my first two years of medical school so far, including things like the gastrointestinal system, which I've just learned earlier this year and the neurological system, which I'm currently working on right now. And additionally, after you answer every single question, it lets you know whether or not you got the answer correct. And it also tells you how many percentage of people who are using the question bank chose each option. Additionally, they also give you a summary as to why that option is correct for that question and why the other options are not correct. And right at the bottom, they also give you a very brief summary as to all the info you need to know on the topic that's being tested in the question that you are doing. So personally, I will use this question bank every single day and then every single time I get a wrong answer, I will read the explanation. I will pick out the part that I didn't understand and I would take that piece of information and put it into my Notion page of all the learning points that I've had for this particular topic. 
So it's a great way of applying your knowledge and practicing and honestly gaining mastery at a certain topic. It helps me become more confident of my own answers and my own reasoning as to why I pick a certain answer when I do exam questions. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys found this useful. I hope you guys found this enjoyable. Leave a like, leave a subscribe. It really helps my channel out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!